Hello and welcome to this extra little tuition, I guess you would call it, on how to use my Australian wildflower reading cards. I created these cards using my own artwork and using my own research on flower and plant reading. These meanings aren't things that I channeled or things that I made up or just things that I, I found. All the meanings are all connected to a thing called the Doctrine of Signatures, which is nature's way of conveying to us the meanings of plants for their usage, be it medicinal, be it for a physical change, but mostly for an emotional and even a non-denominational spirit change and connection as well. Now with the cards, I've shown a few different ways in videos and also in the little guidebook that I wrote to go with them on how to read with them as cards and how to look them up and then get a reading for yourself or for somebody else. So you can use them as a card of the day, you can just shuffle them up and select one or you can do spreads and you can weave them in with other cards as well, other oracle cards and other tarot cards to get another dimension one that connects a little bit more closely uh, with nature and particularly of course with flowers and these ones Australian ones. Now another way that you can use these which is a way to connect a little deeper with nature and also to help on your journey with learning a little bit more too and becoming more observant and more aware and being able to really read the messages and the language of nature for yourself. And this way is to notice what's going on around you. Notice a flower, notice a plant, notice a tree, and really stop and have a look. Now, I am a huge, huge fan of art journaling, and I know it scares a lot of people because it's the A word and the C word, which is the art and creativity and craft word. But it isn't a competitive thing. Any sort of sketching, any sort of doodling will give you the energetic profile and messages that you need. And if you're really that frightened at the beginning, photographs will suffice. But I always, I always get sketches out of people that I, that I come in contact with. But if you can do that, everybody these days just about has access uh, to a camera with their phone. If you can take that picture, of that flower that you see and now this could be growing it could be in a bunch it could be a picture on something it could be just taking notes because it's come to you in a dream in a thought overhearing conversations the description of something and somehow get the essence of what that flower that plant is the things that you're looking at are things that I actually call nature's keys which are the shape, the texture, the fragrance if there are any at all, uh, the colour and also the environment that you find it in and what else is around it. They're important things to take notice of. So remembering if you're taking photographs as well not to come right zoom right in, make sure you have a, a good idea of where it is as well so we need to, to sort of see that. Is it in a swamp? Is it in a desert? Is it all by itself is it this tiny little yellow golden little ray of sunshine in amongst all these big dark brooding red flowers very important things once you've got that once you've got that image however it is you can come back to a source reference and have a look now there in my Australian wildflower reading cards there are 44 plants and I chose all of those for a very very simple reason they, they really represent a lovely cross-section of all of the flowers in Australia. Now, big statement I guess, because there are more flowers on the Australian continent than there are native flowers, than there are on any other continent in the world. We have more, and to the factor of heaps. <laughs> I'm such a bad numbers person, as you can see. I'm an artist, I'm not a numbers person. So, the thing is, of course I haven't got all of the flowers, nobody, nobody could, unless they were a computer I guess. <laughs> but it's a really good cross section, there's, there's flowers from the desert, from the rainforest, from the wetlands, all different colours as well. So a way that you can use these um, cards 
for a reading is to have a look at the flower that is similar and have a look at the qualities. So then you can get a good idea because all of the things that I wrote about are based on the Doctrine of Signature which looks at those keys. Now you're not going to get, if the, the flower isn't in the deck, isn't in one of these images, you're not going to get the exact reading but you're going to get pretty close. And when you read what the meaning is and when you look at the plant, the flower that looks similar to the one that you found, you will start to get some insight when you read the meaning. You know, it could be a flower like the Waratah. It's not a Waratah, it's a big bright red flower that you found. You can read the imagery, but you can see where I've pointed out this is the reason why these different things pertain to this. You can see the similarities because there will be similarities. And then you can start to get that insight because it's about thinking for yourself. It's not about spoon feeding you exactly what I believe because we all believe something and have a different relationship with nature. So it's a really good way to learn for yourself flower reading because that's what really I want you to do. I, I, I don't want you to sit there and, and sort of parrot exactly. Oh, I had one upside down. Something in that for us, isn't there? <laughs> with our Cooktown orchid. Um, so I don't want you to parrot exactly what I have said. These are all pathways for you to start developing your own relationship and deepening your relationship with the language of flowers. Something that's been around for a lot longer than I've been around and will continue to. We just, we just stepped away from it. That's all it is. We're so busy. We're so busy looking for the, the miracle. We're so busy looking for the instant fix of something extraordinary as well. When just the every day, just what is around us already, it's already telling us, is already trying to connect with us. So if you can start doing those things, you can start developing that sort of conversation with your surrounds as well. So that's another way that you can use these cards and you can use the guidebook as well. Now, to find out exactly what flower you have, you need a guidebook. There are modern guidebooks and there are old ones. They're usually called key guides, field guides to flowers. I, I keep this one in a little cover um, because I'm not a real big fan of the really modern botanical science ones. And if you've been to any of my presentations or courses, you'll know why. I just I find the language a little dry. Um, written by scientists, written by scientists. But this one, older copies, oh, they just have the most beautiful descriptive uh, explanations and descriptions of flowers and what they mean and plants as well and through that describing and that's what I think you should be trying to develop uh, being able to describe a flower it's not just a, a white lotus it's a cream lotus with dark tinges it's growing straight it's magnificently large not just it's a white lotus sitting in a pond those sorts of things are the things that lead you into understanding the meaning and understanding the language and understanding what it's trying to say to you as well or to the world it mightn't just be for you yeah it's not always just about you <laughs> it might be having a conversation uh, that way so these older botany books i know whenever i speak to anybody who's interested in flower reading um, and tell them that's what i love they sort of clean out the secondhand bookstores near them but go and have a look at secondhand bookstores and all the old field guides not only do they have the most amazing beautiful plates in them usually they've got beautiful descriptions as well I try I try with my illustrations and with my descriptions as well so that's really what I'm trying to do with my work is going back to that golden era of botany and of having a much more personal relationship with science and with nature and describing things in probably a more emotional humanistic way but a, a great nod to the sciences as well not just a nod but an understanding as well that melding of the two together even though as I said I'm not very good at maths so that is a way that you can use that. If we look at the bluebells, having a look at little blue flowers, have a look at what the meaning in the book says about them, and then you can start seeing those pathways because the colour, as I said, the shape, the environment that it's in, the texture will be similar and will give you a similar understanding. It will start your journey with flower reading, with plant reading, and understanding the meanings of flowers. 
I'd love to hear about your explorations. I'd love to hear about your past experiences as well. So you can hop onto any of my social media feeds or my blogs and share pictures, um, adventures, journeys, and, and ideas as well. I'd love to have a discussion with you. And until then, may nature always bless you.